Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers to fit new front springs, shock absorbers and top shock absorber mounts on this 2001 Land Rover Defender. The first thing we're going to remove is the black plastic cover that covers the top of the shock absorber mount. So there's just six little, um, little uh, Phillips screws and once they're out you can just lift it out of the way and that gives you access to the top of the shock absorber. First thing to jack the vehicle in the air and take the wheel off. Now, we're going to need to lower the axle to, to release the pressure on the springs here, so we are going to need to jack it up from the body and the axle so you can obviously adjust it as and when. You'll see what I'm doing as, uh, as I do the job. Now, here's the top shock absorber turret. So I'm going to take the four 13mm nuts off the bolts around there. I mean, generally, they do get fairly badly corroded and they often will snap. So you will need to buy the plate, which I will show you later. Um, to, to when you rebuild it. Now the, the, the nuts, they do get covered in quite a lot of muck so you will just have to get a screwdriver so you can get enough of the stuff around so you can get your spanner on and then undo the four nuts and say so there's two at the front and two at the rear. The rear's a little bit more awkward but they're still gettable. I've just put a transmission jack under the axle of this so if you have jacked it up under the body you're probably better just going to have a trolley jack just to support the weight because what we're going to do now is take the lower nut off the shock absorber and as that goes down you just want to keep some tension on the spring so you're in control of it rather than the axle just falling away from you. Now then on the bottom of the shock absorber there is a little flat like this that you can see that you're meant to get a spanner on there while you undo that nut but in reality that shock absorber has been on there 10, 15 years. You're not going to use a little spanner on that flat to undo the nut. So you are going to have to hold the, the shock absorber. I mean, we're putting new shock absorbers on this, so it's not the end of the world. You can just hold that anyhow you, anyhow you can, whether it be some grips, your hands if you're strong enough, but you probably won't be. With some grips around the top, so it butts up onto the chassis, then you can undo the nut. As you can see, I've just put some grips at the top of the shock absorber, right at the top mount there. So it'll just, as I'm undoing the nut at the bottom, it will just butt up on the chassis. Then you just get your spanner and just undo the nut from the bottom of the shock absorber. And then once that's off, I will just show you how to remove the whole shock absorber. That's the nut off from the washer. There'll be a rubber bush as well. And then if you just release your grips and you can feed the shock feed the shock absorber up and because we've already got the mounted nuts at the top out the way and now I've not taken the, the top nuts off the shock absorber because we're changing the whole thing and the strut top there'll be no need so if you push the shock absorber all the way up you can then feed that up and then pull the whole shock absorber with the turret out all in one and that's the nut that I haven't bothered undoing because we're fitting a new one. I've lowered the axle as much as I can and the spring is loose but it's just to, to keep in more control I've just used a couple of these very easy to obtain spring compressors so just take a bit of the pressure on the spring do it nice and evenly even though my spanner's got stuck on that particular one do it nice and evenly until you've got to a position where you can just remove the spring nice and safely. And the last thing to remove is the plate with the four bolts on that hold your shock absorber turret on the top and we're going to replace this with a new one as well. I've put my spring tensioners back on the spring just to take a little bit of tension. I'm just going to make sure the surfaces are clean where the spring fits top and bottom and if you put your top plate in, I mean, I'm trying to do this one handed, if um, you, want, you might want to just put a nut on that to hold it in place and then it's just a case of sliding the spring in and then I'll release the pressure on the spring compressors which will clamp up the um, top plate and then it's just a case of finding its place where it sits and then we'll put the shock absorber back in. I've got the spring in place, that's worth mentioning these are handy, they are left and right handed so just check your part numbers to see which, uh, which side goes where. So that's in place, now to fit the shock absorber we can either Take it off as we did with the old one, so you can fit the shock absorber in the top turret and then feed the whole thing through, or you can feed the shock absorber up and down the spring, put the bottom mount in first, and then put the turret down on top and tighten it all up afterwards, whichever suits you. Just make sure when you fit in the shock absorbers, you get all the two plates and the rubber um, buffer in first, and then obviously through the top turret or the bottom mount, then put the other side on, 
and then you nut on obviously underneath and then tighten it all up and you'll just notice that the, in the bottom washer there's little um, that serrations that fit to centralise the shock absorber in each, each hole top and bottom. With everything mounted in, just if you mount everything loosely so you can put the nuts on, you might just have to tap the turret around just so you can get all the nuts and washers on. Then put the lower shock absorber mount on so you've got the two, two plates and the rubber washer and then the nut on the bottom and then once everything's in place all loose you can tighten everything up. Because of the limited room where the lower nut and shock absorber bushes go underneath the shock absorber you will have to make sure that the locating washers are in the hole dead central so the shock absorber is really really central otherwise you won't have enough threads to get the nut started. So you'll have to make sure everything's dead central. You may even have to get somebody to hold the shock absorber down as tight as they can so you can get the nut started on the bottom. You can't get a torque wrench onto the bottom of the shock absorber so you just have to feel when the nuts, the, well what do, that happens is the washers get, as they tighten up, they get onto the shank of the bolt, so where, where the threads run out, so it actually butts up to where it, it won't tighten up anymore, and you'll feel that when it gets tight enough, you'll, you'll feel when it's there, and as for the top uh, strut mount bolts, they're M8 bolts, so I imagine 25 newton meters would be adequate for those, so that's this side done now, all we're going to do is put the wheel back on, and do the other side, oh, and don't forget to replace the top um, plastic cover.